back often. Red and black colours means only one thing. It's a model in Mammut colours and it's the Liebherr LTM 1650-8.1. And it's the successor to the very popular LTM 1500 crane. Turning the box around and we see that it's made by WSI models. And there are a couple of WSI model numbers. It has the Mammut model number 410296. Big box, heavy box, and it weighs 12 pounds 14 ounces, and that's over 5.8 kilograms. So let's open the box and see what's inside. And as you can see, there are a couple of large expanded polystyrene trays, and first up is a nice instruction manual. We'll look at that in a minute. The trays have got that excellent clipping system, so no tape to cut. Let's gather together for a reading of the manual. And from the parts in the box, you can build the four configurations shown. On the next page, there's a full parts list for the model. And actually the Mammut version does include extra parts, including these four very nice lifting chains. And you also get two extra pieces of five ton counterweight. Moving on, and there's a comprehensive set of sequence pictures. And there's also English text talking you through how to assemble the model. It also does it from the perspective of replicating how the real crane assembles itself. Overall, it does a very good job of talking you through the details of the model. And that also includes weaving diagrams. We will start simple and put the crane into a transport configuration and we'll take off packaging tape from the winch drum. We'll run the crane without a hook block but that still leads the hoist cutoff chain and it is possible to carefully remove that by undoing the link at the top. And the last job to do in this mode is fit a bumper at the back. But the real crane on the box shows a different configuration with the rear outrigger box fitted. So that is a separate part on the model as it is on the real crane. We remove the rear bumper and then we can offer up the outrigger box. And when it's in place, you secure it at the top with a very long pin. And that's necessary because this part of the model carries a lot of weight when the crane is erected. With the box fitted, there's a bit of detail to sort out and that's some hydraulic hoses which plug into the rear of the crane. We can then return the cap to its transport position. And as shown on the box, this crane is rigged with a hook block. The blocks on the model set a new standard because the cheek weights are separate. You get 10 of them and you can combine them in different ways, depending on the size of the hook block that you're using. You can hang them on the hook, but the compromise is that they get knocked off very easily. Starting underneath and the model has a detailed chassis, the steering and suspension systems are modelled, as is the drive shaft arrangements. The model has a big Convoy Exceptionnel sign, and it's bigger than the one seen in the photo of the real crane. Other details include a number plate, chevrons, and a tying on point for the hook. The sheaves in the boom head are plastic, which replicates those in the real crane, and we'll say a bit more about those later. There's tiny graphics and also a tying off point for the hoist rope. Looking at the boom head side on, you can see the many tiny graphics. The model looks very convincing in the red and black Mammut color scheme. And that includes textured steps into the cab, a fleet number, and various other graphics details. There's a black rubber skirt above the wheels. 
and you can see that there are different hubs on the driven axles. Another high point is the branding on the tyres. There's detailing on the boom and on the ram jackets. And as we get towards the back of the crane, the detailing continues at a high level. The sharpness of the graphics is also really good. At the back, there are the usual lights and number plates. The outrigger beams have got full chevron detailing. And again, you can see some of the high quality tiny graphics. The pistons have smooth faces. And this Mammut version of the model has a different design of spreader plate. Moving on to the engine area behind the driving cab. And there are some very nice etched pieces. And again, the overall standard of the modeling is at a very high level. Around the crane cab, there are a variety of metal handrails. And there are the wipers and more graphics details and etched walkways. Detailing inside the cab includes a variety of computer consoles. Moving to the back of the crane, there are more metal handrails. And there are counterweight retaining plates. The graphics detailing on various parts is also excellent. Moving on to the boom, and it has fin walled sections with detailed collars at the top of each section. The TY guying system is another highly engineered and detailed part. And just like the rest of the model, it looks really good in the Mammut color scheme. In addition to the hook block, we've already seen two others are provided one smaller and one much bigger. They are metal and fully functional, including working safety catches. Going underneath again, and each of the axles has its own individual steering, and you can force quite a hard lock. Also implemented is suspension on axles or axle groups. Out on the Cranes Etc Super Highway and the model rolls well, with all wheels fully grounded. You can also see that the suspension system works well. If you've got suitable transport, you can make a very convincing convoy. And one of the nice additions on this model are the support frames that can be used to carry the T5 extension boom. Of course, there's a lot of counterweight with the model, so you can use a ballast carrier. And we'll start by adding on the spreader plates and then follow that up with two ballast trays. We'll then load up the rest of the trailer with ballast weights. There are still plenty more things we can carry and that includes the TY guying arrangement. And out of the box that's rigged for transport mode. We can follow that up with the counterweight frame and the trays we saw earlier get fitted to it. You could also carry a luffing jib winch if you need it. Another very nice inclusion with the model is these tensionable chains. You can shorten or lengthen them with the brass fitting. And these can then be used to provide lashing for the T5 extension. Although where you fit the ends of the chains will depend on the trailer. Anyway, enough talking about road delivery. The crane is now delivered on site. So we'll commence the setting up by pulling out the outriggers. There are a number of access ladders which can be lowered, and that also includes a folding version. The cap can be swung round into its operating position, and then the handrails can be swung up to their operating position. The pads on the outriggers can be unscrewed to get the length that you want, and you can also clip the pads to make sure they're held centrally. And then to spread the load of the outriggers, we can use the spreader plates. With all that done, there's no problem at all getting the model posed wheels free. And particularly pleasing on the model are the very straight outrigger beams. So no sagging here. Raising the boom is super smooth because locking the hydraulic rams is done using an Allen key on a small grub screw on each ram. And this system works very well. The hoist cutoff chain sometimes slides off the rope, so you need to refix it. But on this model, there's also a hole, so you could actually pin it in place, and that would stop it jumping off. Another item to fit at the top of the boom is a wind speed measurer and light, and that's yet another nice detail. The model also includes four standard lifting chains. These just slide over the hooks and are locked in place by the safety latches. 
the counterweight assembly needs to be put together and that means adding on the two counterweight trays. They hook over and are then secured by pins but you might have to push the pins quite hard because of paint thicknesses. You can then hang the assembly from the supplied chains. Another nice little touch is the locator for the counterweight tray on the deck. This can be rotated into the up position and then it's easy to locate the tray in the right place. Yet another inclusion with the model is a device for lifting up the counterweight blocks and you just need to add some included loops at the end. Once it's attached to the hook, you can then use it to carry counterweight blocks. So that's another way to pose the model. There are some additional handrails to fit to the counterweight assembly, and these fit pretty well without dropping off too easily. Next, we've loaded up the tray with some blocks, and the whole crane can rotate to attach itself to it. We'll just show it here by hand, and it's best to have a pair of pliers handy to tightly grip the pins. And that's because it's difficult to get salami sized fingers near to where they need to go. You can use the jacking assembly on the model to raise the counterweight tray, but it was tough to use. And if you want to go for completeness, you can add on the luffing jib winch, although of course the luffing jib is not included. A nice feature on the model is the vario ballast mechanism. So you can alter the radius at which the ballast blocks operate. Next we've got some more detail to add and that includes covers for the jacking holes. And there's also the counterweight retaining plates. There's also an access ladder to fit on each side of the crane assembly. Telescoping the boom sections out is nice and easy. And they slide well. Each of the sections can be locked and these are at 46%. 92% and 100%. One thing that doesn't work quite so well is the hoist rope on the pulleys, and that's because the groove in the pulleys is a bit too narrow, so the rope sits on top and comes off easily. Yet another inclusion with the model is a lifting beam, and that includes the shackles to fit the chains to. Still on we go, and the crane cab tilts very well, and it's poseable in any position that you want. Next up we'll go for a big configuration change that's adding the T5 boom and the TY guy. To add the T5 boom you need to take out the top section of the existing boom and you do that by pressing in the spring clip and then carefully removing the boom section. You just need to make sure the spring clip doesn't fly out and give you a sucker punch. You then effectively reverse the process and insert the spring clip into the end of the T5 boom and then carefully install it back into the main boom. The first stage in adding the TY guy is adding the rod connector to the main boom. Here it's shown pre-assembled and when it's in place you screw it in position. On the TY guy itself we need to remove the transport beam and then we can offer up the whole assembly onto the main boom. Here we're doing it with the boom up in the air but please don't do it this way on the real crane. Once it's in place it gets screwed firmly into position, including the lift rams. The guy rods get connected up, and the end of the guy ropes get connected to the boom head. With the system fully connected up we can then set it to use, and firstly we raise up both sides of the Y guy itself, and the hydraulic rams that control it are pleasingly stiff. Then to maximise the stabilisation, we spread her legs. Finally the whole system gets tensioned up by using the key in the winch drums. We're happy to have you with us tonight and hope you'll come back often. This is a great model of the Liebherr LTM 1650 by WSI Models. The combination of detailing and functionality is first class, and it's also exceptionally good in that many additional parts are included, such as chains and support frames. It looks great in mammoth colours, and as one of the best mobile crane models, it is excellent.